Welcome back to the channel. Obviously, as you can see, I am dressed in some winter apparel, and behind me you can see all the snow that we have here in Ohio. It's actually Tuesday, February 16th, and I actually did not work today because FedEx, well, at least the FedEx terminal that I'm out of, is closed because the roads were level two and three here in the uh, fall, uh, surrounding counties that I'm in. So really couldn't do anything with the deliveries, and we'll go out here and just show you some of the uh, snow we got. Obviously you can see, been shoveling. This was all shoveled up last night, and there was nothing on the blacktop. And then come this morning, it is completely just covered. There's a little walkway out here to one of the trucks. Good old Ohio weather. May or may not get the uh, Yamaha 450 out today to ride on the roads a little bit because it definitely won't go in the snow ditches, but snow plow's been down our road about four or five times, clearing it out. Still pretty slick. See a little bit of a shine to it. But we got about eight to 10 inches here in uh, Ohio where I'm at, on the western side of Ohio. But since I had the yesterday off actually, I took a vacation day and then I have today off, I figured it would have been perfect time to start doing my subs in my truck. So that's actually what I was doing yesterday. Didn't finish installing them, I'm gonna go ahead and finish that today, but I'll go ahead and show you what I've done so far. But before we do that, I'm going to fire the truck up, let the inside warm up so it's nice and toasty in there. So the plastic trim pieces will, you know, pull easier. And yeah, get some of this snow off here, but we're gonna do a, uh, mild cold start the truck, the truck is actually plugged in so it won't be a true cold start but probably one of the coldest times this truck is ever going to fire up and it really won't drive anywhere so it doesn't really ever see winter time so if we're just sitting out here Decently cleaned up, the sun will do the rest. But not a uh, not a bad way to get your workout in and move a couple hundred pounds of snow. As you can see, block top, I don't know if you can see the steam rolling off of it, but block top is clearing off. This was all covered in snow here where the truck was sitting, so got this most of the way out. That's ice down there, these bit patches. Big old sleet of ice right here. So Gonna try and clean up just a little bit more of this and then probably uh, pull the Chrysler back, honestly, and then start working on the truck. But I got it heating up inside there. So once it's heated up, I will turn it off and show you what I've done. Floor mats are out. Obviously, you saw when I backed up, I had the floor mats out, so I took my shoe off so I don't get the carpet all wet. But heat's on and we're gonna make some progress. So first off, I had to run the power wire for the amp and under the driver's side, there's a hole in the firewall with a plastic uh, cover behind it. And it's actually the same hole that I ran my hood latch for my power, or, sorry, my remote start. And went ahead and just drilled that out till the one gauge wire fit through it. Fit through it. And 
that actually runs down along over here behind the parking brake. As you can see, I have it tucked right behind the carpet and behind this plastic trim piece. It runs along the floor down here. And to get this plastic trim piece out, just like all these other trim pieces, you first pull up on the door seal here. So there's one, two, and three, I believe, right here. You pull these up, and then you grab a hold of up inside here and pull it straight back, because you have clips going this way and also this way. So these come up first, and this comes out. Also, the weather trim just has to be peeled back. You just grab a hold of it and just peel it back a little bit. Not that big of a deal to put back in. I can see mine's not fully back in down here. It's not that big of a deal. You literally just pull it, maybe, I can get a hold of it. Looks like that. Pops loose. And then you can fix whatever you want to fix. So, I'll go ahead and fix this right here so you can see. Look at that. Pretty much one handed, fix that. And then you just push it back in place. And your weather trim is back in place. So, not too crazy. I have the remote start wire running alongside the power wire along through here. This trim piece right here between the two doors is black piece, same thing. Pull this weather trip, weather stripping out, and then it pulls out towards the inside of the cab from up here. You don't have to take anything out, don't have to take anything, any bolts or anything, just pops right loose. The wires actually ran underneath this alongside down here. And then if we go to the back, it comes out around this, and then same way with this back piece back here. You actually have to take the rear seat out, which it's four 18 millimeter bolts for my truck. This seat just flips forward. Be careful because this side is spring loaded, so this will want to, you know, kick out. But you won't lose anything. You'll just try to kick to one way to keep this seat like it is right now. And then if you look back in here, you can see my power wire running right through here. You can go see it right there. But take the uh, seat belt bolt out which is actually where you had to run and grab the uh, socket or T-fitting, or whatever you want to call it. It is a T-50 to get those seatbelt bolts out of the bottom down here. So, which if you don't have these, I highly recommend you invest in a set because they have actually saved my butt more than once because you always come across a bolt that has one of these stupid star designs. But the T-50, so you take the bottom bolt out of the seatbelt, and then you can pull this plastic trim piece uh, back, and then this piece will actually come out. Then I ran the power wire and the remote start wire along the same path. And it comes up and it exits right here. So, and then it actually goes behind the seat and comes back around and plugs into my amplifier. Now, like I said, this isn't completely bolted in, so it's not you know dead set where it's going to exactly be, but it is a rough estimate. I have the amplifier actually mounted, but you know, stuff's always going to shift around. Had to do a little bit of trimming on the box inside here to get these subs to fit, but they fit up nice. All the bolts are lined up, so there's no air leaking out of them. I will put a wiring, or I'll put a little picture up here of how I wired mine, or how, sorry, how John wired them for me. They are wired to a one ohm. Still waiting for the mailman to actually drop off my seat uh, risers, my seat spacers, so this seat can actually be flipped forward. Uh, if you know these tradesmen, they won't, the seat won't flip forward from factory, so that spacer will do two things. One, lift it up so the seat doesn't touch the subwoofer, and two, so I can actually flip the back seat forward, so if I want to tune the amplifier. So probably won't be installing those today, seeing how it is really bad out, and I don't know if the mailmen are going to come down this road but I still have some wiring to do need to run the RC cables into actually the back of the radio over there we'll go ahead and go to the other side and I'll show you how I ran the RC cables and the remote base knob the passenger side I actually ran the remote and the RCA cables along the back of the cab they run down they run under this thing as that trim piece on the other side they run underneath that, run down to this next trim piece, run along this under the carpet, run all the way down here, just, just pretty much the same thing as the other side, just mimicked on this side. And I had just enough 
cable to do all this. It runs in behind here. Sorry, there's a little water in here from the snow yesterday. But runs in behind this trim piece up to the front. Oh, there we go, getting the snow in my truck already. And then, as you can see, here are the cables. Took my glove box out. That's not too difficult. There's this little uh, right here. This comes right loose. And then, as you can see, there's these little uh, hooks that it hooks on. So you undo these, you push the little tabs in, comes right out, not that difficult. The RCA cable and remote base knob are actually ran behind this, this panel, straight up. Comes up here, comes into the glove box, runs inside the glove box along this little crease right here. And then it's gonna jump up inside here, go to my radio and my new wiring harness. So that's actually all I have left to do. And then I actually have to run the final amp under the hood. I actually haven't finished that yet, but the ground wires grounded to my rear seat bolt, one of the rear seat belt bolts from this middle seat, one of these. So I'm pretty sure that'll ground it, but there is a little bit of a uh, insulation inside there. So if for some reason it doesn't ground it, just flip the seat forward, unbolt it, and then I'll just bolt it to actually this. So whenever I go to put it back on there. So not too much work left to do. Like I said, I had a couple days off. Like I said, I had a couple days off and I wanted to get this done. So I went ahead and started working on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. Just got the bezel off the radio. Two 20 millimeter uh, T20 bolts up here. Those two come out. Uh, some say that there is a bolt in the cup holder or that little, that little uh, spire there. I didn't have one. So I just went ahead and pried it loose. It's pretty hard on there. So you gotta pry pretty good. And then I went ahead and disconnected all of the harnesses, connected to the bezel, so all, for all these controls. And now I'm going to unbolt the radio and plug my new harness in. So hopefully you can hear me. I had to fire the truck up because it was getting cold and also so my battery didn't drain. The power wire is ran right behind here. And my fuse is right here. So nice tucked away. The wire for the remote start is actually ran. ran. I had to cut a little bitty slit in the amp box, or sorry, the uh, fuse box right here. And it's actually inside there off of the cigarette, a cigarette lighter. And now, since everything's not gonna burn down, I wanna make sure nothing set, got set on fire because I hate wiring. I can do wiring, I just hate it. And everything in here seems pretty good. Let's go over here. I'm gonna keep track of my battery voltage, but I've already checked and see how it's gonna be. Everything's tidied up except for the glove box and I still have to put the bolts in for the rear seat. But we're gonna go ahead and play a song here. So this is what we're gonna play, see how it does. Volume's not turned up that loud. It's 30, I mean, not that bad. Subs are turned out about halfway. I don't know if it's gonna pick it up or not. I broke down, can't fix that shit. I cry that night, I beat that shit. I'm too old, I whip that bitch. Left me alone, but I live that bitch. She texts right now, I like hit that bitch. Old friends like how you get that lit. Same on me, but they think I switch. So it's not very loud right now, it needs tuned still. But they are in and they are working. And that is basically all I've wanted to do as of now. Go over here, we can turn it up a little bit. I can sure feel them. basically all I wanted to get done today. They actually cleared the roads off and the sun did a lot of damage to the roads, so probably won't be getting the uh, four-wheeler out today. Let's go over here and check the battery. It's still staying 14 volts. It fluctuates just a little bit, but as long as it stays up there, right in the middle. So, it's probably gonna do it for this video. I know it wasn't the uh, most uh, informative, but I'll try to post some pictures of the 
wiring that I did and how I ran it. And so hopefully if you want to do this, you can, uh, you know, follow what I did. But if you have any questions, go ahead and post in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. And don't forget to subscribe and like the video and we'll see you next one. Ryan Little. <laughs>